Ow! Hello everybody, and welcome to the rest of my book haul from the Iliad. In case you didn't know, all the books that will be in this are from Hard Case Crime. I said this in another video, but I was always a little weird about Hard Case Crime and like, I don't know, I don't know. This is basically the reason why, and it's really lame. This right here, uh, one I got a while back, Somebody Owes Me Money uh, by Donald Westlake. Now this is, I believe, six by eight. Now originally, um, the Hard Case Crime books were this. So that would be, what, five by, no, four by six, I think. So if you look at them, they're um, a little smaller. Um, but they're the size of all the old paperbacks from back in the day. The big deal was Hard Case Crime started in about 2004 um, by uh, Charles Arday, I think is how you say his name, and uh, Max Phillips. Um, and they had a publisher, and I can't remember the name of the publisher. They were just an imprint of this publisher from... 2004 to 2010 and that's when they made books this size um, and then after that um, everything that came out after 2010 was um, put out by Titan books and they're in this size format now now I think the reason why and it's funny because I wrote him actually and asked him and he wrote back right away, super cool. But basically, it's just they couldn't sell the books like that. And he said it was either go broke or put books out. And I think what it is is that a lot of the um, bookstores don't take this size book anymore. Like Barnes & Noble and stuff. Because like when I, put, when I put my book out, or one of my books out... Um, it's the same size as this. Um, so there you go. And I wanted to do um, the pocket size paperback size. And I, they don't even offer that. A couple years ago, when I did get a bunch of my books made in that size, I had to go through lulu.com instead of uh, just doing it through Amazon. So anyway, I didn't like buying books that size um, because the way my bookcases were all set up everything fit really nice when they were all the same size and you don't really find these size books from hard case and stores anymore but if you go to used bookstores you can find a bunch of them and so uh, I got every single one I could and I even have them in numeric order so the first one here um, hard case crime number two uh, is uh, Max Phillips fade to blonde now this one I think won the Seamus award I'm not 100% on that but I think so um, but let's see he promised to save her from a vengeful mobster he just didn't know he'd have to join the mob to do it Oh my gosh. Um, next one is a Day Keen book. And if you know, um, I was talking earlier on the other video about how hard it is to come across a Day Keen book for me where I live kind of thing. So um, this is Hard Case Crime 07. Home is the Sailor. And that's a pretty badass cover. Um, no man could resist her, but could any man ever have her? After years at sea, a Swede Nelson just wanted to find a nice girl and settle down. What he found was Corliss Mason, sensual, irresistible, and deadly. Soon, Swedes helping Corliss cover up a killing, but how long can they get away with murder? Haven't read it? Can't wait to do so. Boom. Next. That's enough. Plunder of the Sun by David Dodge by the best-selling author of To Catch a Thief. Let's see. On the trail of the lost treasure of the Incas with every fortune hunter in South America closing in. The back of this is even more beat up. 
than the front in this lane. Looks like it was on asphalt or something. Now this one I actually have an ebook, but I wanted to grab it in this too. So Branded Woman by Wade Miller, uh, author of Touch of Evil, and it says, she came to kill. Oh my gosh. International jewelry smuggling may be a man's business, but beautiful Kay Morgan can hold her own with the best. Until the day a shadowy rival known only as the traitor has her abducted and scarred for life as a warning to stay out of his way. Dun, 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 dun. Very nice. Um, number 12, Hard Case Crime, um, by Peter Pavia, called Dutch, Dutch Uncle, author of The Cuba Project. I know absolutely nothing about this book. Um, three days out of prison and trying to stay on the right side of the law, Harry doesn't really want to get involved with Manfred's drug deals, but he needs the money, so he agrees to make one simple delivery. We all know how that's gonna go. Boom. This one I'm actually reading right now. This is Hard Case Crime number 16, Nightwalker by Donald Hamilton, best-selling creator of Matt Helm. It says, they were on the run from a dead man. This book is actually really, really cool. Um, it has a great setup. I'm about halfway through it. This army guy is going off to get stationed somewhere or whatever. And um, he's hitchhiking at night. And this guy pulls over and offers him a ride. And as they're going, uh, basically the guy tries to kill him and then blow the car up. <clears throat> and when... The army dude wakes up in the hospital. They're calling him the name of the guy who was driving the car. And his wife comes and takes him back to the house. It's like, yeah, I know you're not my husband. It's cool. You know, let's just figure this out. And like this whole thing starts unraveling. But his face is all effed up. And that's why he's got like bandages on his face. Now... The reason why I picked this one to start reading, I think because the cover is so gaudy. Like, it looks almost like a comic book. It's kind of ridiculous. But um, the book's really good, so I'm digging that. Next, we have Say It With Bullets by Richard Powell, author of A Shot in the Dark. When it's time to say goodbye, say it with bullets. First publication in 50 years. Ever wonder why they call it... The Wild West. Uh, Bill Wayne told his beautiful tour guide that he took the bus trip through the West to relax. But who can relax with bodies turning up at every stop? This actually sounds pretty cool. But, like, some of the covers look a bit wonky. Anyway, hard case crime number 23. The Last Quarry by Max Allen Collins. Now... I've read the first three Quarry books, and if you haven't seen the Quarry TV show on Cinemax, it is awesome. It's really, really good. This is a great cover, though, too. But Max Allen Collins, um, best-selling author of Road to Perdition. Um, he also did all of the Mike Hammer books after Mickey Spillane died. There was some other series that he was the creator of. Can't remember off the top of my head. But the Quarry books are pretty good. And I'm hoping they get better because they're okay right now. Like the first one was really good. And the second one was okay. And then the third one was just kind of right there too. There's a bunch of them. So I'm hoping that... Um, the next one kind of ups the ante a little bit because I haven't been super jumping into wanting to read the rest of them. And I'm not going to read what the back of this book is because I want to be completely shocked when I start reading it. But this is a Roger McGinnis cover. So um, it's just amazing. The Guns of Heaven by Peter Hamill. Uh, it says... The headlines will be written in the blood of the innocents. The guns of heaven. Tomorrow, the struggle will be fought on our streets. 
On a visit to Northern Ireland, newspaper reporter Sam Briscoe meets with a mysterious IRA leader and agrees to deliver an envelope to his supporters in New York City. It's a decision with grave consequences for Briscoe and for his 11-year-old daughter as well because the bloody Irish conflict is about to come to the streets of New York and Briscoe is the only man standing in his way. That actually sounds pretty good. The funny thing about this book is that I got this at the Iliad and about two days before that, I went to this bookstore in, I guess it would be considered Apple Valley, the high desert out here. I actually bought this book. So I have two copies of this book, bought two days within each other and I just didn't even realize it. I just, I'm like, ooh, hard case crime, guns of heaven, cool, I'll pick it up again. So um, I have two of these now. Now, one of the things that makes me sad about um, when Hard Case Crime was with that original uh, publisher, I can't remember the name of it, before they went to Titan, you could, you could do this thing called the Hard Case Crime Book Club. And in each one of these books, it has like a little cardstock rip out that you could like mail and you get two books every month or something like that. That's awesome. And I'm so pissed that they don't do that anymore. So this book, Songs of Innocence, this is by Richard Alias, Alias, but it's actually um, one of Charles R. Day's pen names. And this one, either the Seamus Award or um, the Edgar Award, I don't remember, uh, but it's the first publication anywhere. So um, I'm excited about that. This one I'm super excited about. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it, and um, I really, really want to read it. It's called Money Shot by Chris, Krista Faust. Um, it would take more than bullets to stop Angel Dare. But this is about some, like, I think she's a stripper. Uh, no, former porn star, sorry. It all began with a phone call asking former porn star Angel Dare to do one more movie. Before she knew it, she'd been shot and left for dead in the trunk of a car. But Angel is a survivor, and that means she'll get to the bottom of what's been done to her, even if she has to leave a trail of bodies along the way. And this cover's great. It looks like it's got um, money paper clipped to the cover. It's just a really neat cover. So can't wait to read that. Now we have Hard Case Crime number 43, The Murderer Vine. This is by Shepard Rifkin. In the deep south, the days can be lonely, but the nights are murder. Okay, let's see what this says. Because old times there are not forgotten. On the summer off from college, three boys went to Mississippi to work for civil rights. They were never seen again. So the father of one of the boys hired New York private eye Joe Dunn. His assignment, find the men responsible and don't come home until they're dead. Now this one, Steve Fisher's No House Limit, a novel of Las Vegas. The Washington Star says, Sex, Sadism, and Action. Uh, Steve Fisher also wrote, I Wake Up Screaming. They back the world's greatest gambler to bring down an honest man. I really liked Casino and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Those are my two favorite Vegas books. Now we have 50 to 1. Um, this is also by Charles Arde, um, or Ardai. I think it's our day. Check out how amazing this cover is. It's got this guy and this chick, and they're looking... I, I didn't notice it at first, but they're looking at a bunch of old covers, like old books. It's pretty awesome. Okay, this says, What if instead of having been founded 50 books ago, Hard Case Crime had been founded 50 years ago by a rascal out to make a quick buck off of the popularity of Pulp Fiction? Such a fellow might make a few enemies, especially after publishing a supposed non-fiction account of a heist at a mob-run nightclub, actually penned by an 18-year-old showgirl with dreams of writing for the New Yorker. With both the cops and the crooks after them, our heroes are about to learn that reading and writing pulp novels is a lot more fun than living them. That sounds amazing. 
I'm very excited about that. This might move up my list quite a bit. Now this one is actually really cool. Um, this is Hard Case Crime number 58, Stop This Man by Peter Rabe. Um, now if you look at this, there was actually a really clean one of these at the, at the Iliad too, but I don't know, this, look at it. It's like all bent and like kind of tore up. Like it looks like it was either used as um, something to like, like something to hold a car, like put under a car tire or something. I don't know, it just looks so crappy that like I just wanted to get it. Um, and it's all ripped. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a mess of a book. I was just like, oh wow, maybe somebody used this to like, so their car wouldn't roll down the driveway or so they put it on their bike tires to make it sound like a motorcycle or they were going down a hill and their brakes didn't work on their bike. So they jammed this in the fork to keep the bike. I don't know. I have a lot of wild ideas about what could have happened to this, but um, I liked it. So let's talk about the book, actually. He carried death everywhere he went. Some men and some merchandise are just too hot to handle. Let's see, we got some gold. We got the FBI. Sounds good. And that's another Robert McGinnis. You can totally tell the Robert McGinnis ones. And it's usually the background of a Robert McGinnis one that you could look at and go, fuck, that's Robert McGinnis. All right. And then the last one here is kind of, it's pretty awesome. I love the cover because it's so sparse. Um, it's Memory by Donald Westlake. And it's the final novel from him that, M.W.A. Grand Master. First publication ever. Pretty thick. It's Hard Case Crime 64. The crime was over in a minute, but the consequences lasted a lifetime. Hospitalized after a liaison with another man's wife ends in violence. Paul Cole, not Paula Cole, Paul Cole has just one goal, to rebuild his shattered life, but with his memory damaged, the police hounding him, and no way even to get home, Paul's facing steep odds and a bleak fate if he fails. Wow. That's pretty awesome. I'm just really excited about this. And this looks like brand new. Like, there's no spine wear. Like, whoever had this never even opened it. The spine's perfect. So this is just awesome. And how much, like the whole thing, like, so these are all of the um, books I got at the Iliad. And um, I think there was like 30 books all together and it cost um, right under 70. So if that's good for you, 70 bucks for 30 books, um, definitely check the Iliad out. Um, there's a couple other places I'm going to be doing some book haul videos of as um, the weeks go. Probably actually this week. I'll just knock them out so I don't have to do them again. <laughs> but um, some of the places I got like all the books for like 50 cents, 25 cents, or a dollar. So um, I'll show you those ones too uh, sometime here soon. So anyway, um, until next time everybody, take care of yourself and each other.